The engine control module operates a number of electrical components in order to carry out its programming. In some cases, those components can draw a lot of current more than what the drivers in the ECM can handle. When that's the case, the ECM relies on an intermediary to take care of turning that component on and off. It's called a relay. And troubleshooting relay controlled circuits is the topic of today's service done right. Today's edition of Service Done Right is made possible by Advance Auto, professional quality parts, service, and solutions dedicated to your shop. Go to my.advancepro.com to learn more. Relays are devices that allow a small current flow circuit to control a higher current flow circuit. For the purpose of today's video, we're going to focus on those circuits controlled by the engine control module. In many cases, the ECM controls circuits directly through its own internal drivers. But in the cases where the component it has to control will draw more current than it can handle, about an amp or so, then it's going to use a relay to control that component. When diagnosing a fault in a relay control circuit, you must consider two separate circuits in order to find the problem. The two to consider are the control circuit and the load circuit. The control circuit is that side of the circuit controlled by the engine control module. Typically, B plus voltage is sent to an internal coil in the relay, and that coil is grounded by the ECM through an internal driver. And when it does, the current flowing through that coil of wire creates a magnetic field that closes the relay's internal switch and that completes the circuit to the load, the component that the ECM is ultimately trying to control. It's also important for you to understand what happens when the control circuit is turned off. Not only does the load circuit open, turning off the primary component, but the collapse of the magnetic field creates a voltage spike that, if left unchecked, could find its way back to the ECM and damage the driver. This voltage spike can reach up to 200 volts, and a variety of ways are used to prevent that spike from hitting the control module. For that reason, it's critical that you always use a relay that's made for that specific application. Don't just grab one off the bench, even if it is just for a quick test or verification. The first step in any electrical diagnosis is a review of the wiring diagram. And when I'm diagnosing a relay controlled circuit, I'd like to identify the fuse or fuses that power both the control circuit and the load circuit. Why? Often the components that are relay controlled are buried in the engine compartment and difficult to access directly. And I hate doing things that are difficult. So instead, I'm going to use my meter and an amp probe to begin my diagnosis. Let's start with the control circuit. Using a fused jumper wire or fuse buddy like this one, replace the fuse with your test lead and place your amp probe around it. Connect the amp probe to your digital multimeter and select the millivolt scale. Don't forget to zero the meter and be sure that the clamp is fully closed around the test lead. The amp probe reacts to the magnetic field that's generated around any conductor when current is flowing and it converts it to a millivolt output that our digital multimeter and our digital scope can interpret and display. To convert the meter reading to its amperage equivalent, you'll need to apply the scaling shown on your tool. In this case, one millivolt is the same as 10 milliamps. With everything in place, attempt to turn the circuit on. In this case, we'll need to start the engine. You should see one of two possible readings. First would be a zero reading, indicating that the control circuit is either suffering from an open circuit condition or, and more likely, the ECM is not seeing all it wants to see before allowing the component to actuate. To help distinguish between the two, use your scan tool and use the bidirectional controls to activate the component that you're testing. If that works, well then you know the ECM has the capability to turn the device on, 
Maybe it's missing an input, something it doesn't see or needs to see before it can actually issue that command. Read up on the system operation and start checking for those sensor inputs. The second possibility is measuring current flow under one amp. This actually tells you two things. First, you know that the ECM has seen all it needs to see from its associated sensors and has decided to command the actuator on. And second, and obviously, is that the control circuit is intact and working. If we've proven out that the control side of the circuit works, then we need to check the load side of the circuit. Now, in this particular vehicle, there are two separate fuses supplying power to these two separate circuits. So we'll need to access the load side fuse here in the underhood fuse box. If the reading is zero amps, it could be an open circuit or a bad relay. Using a fused jumper wire, remove the relay and use the jumper to bridge the two pins that complete the load circuit and see if the current reading returns to normal. Of course, the question is, what's normal? Well, you can often look up the resistance specifications for the component that you're testing and using Ohm's law, you can determine what the current flow should be. That's a good baseline to start with. If the current reading is still zero, Diagnose the circuit path as you would with any other open circuit condition. If your current reading is lower than what you anticipated, you could have an issue with voltage drop somewhere in the circuit or even within the relay itself. As you did earlier, remove the relay and use a fused jumper wire to bridge the two pins that complete the load side of the circuit. If your current returns to normal, well then you know what problem is in the relay. If not, perform voltage drop testing on the circuit to isolate the cause. Another possible reading you'll get is higher than what you expected. If that's the case, check the load for an internal short and repair as needed. If the internal coil has shorted to itself, its resistance is going to be lower than what it should be. And that means higher current flow as a result. And finally, you may get a current reading that's exactly what you expected it to be. If that's the case, we know that the control and load circuits electrically are just fine. So look for a mechanical issue in the component. For example, in the AC compressor clutch that we're working on here, look at the air gap in the coil to see if it's too excessive. Diagnosing a relay controlled circuit can be made a lot easier if you use current as your primary diagnostic tool. Not only is this a service done right, it's a service done easy. Just the kind I like. Hey, that'll do it for this edition of Service Done Right. Thanks for watching.